Thanks for joining us today on Apostolic Pentecostal Channel. We are here to provide new and classic sermons weekly. We have tried to remaster and restore these sermons. Thanks for joining us. Please like, comment, and subscribe. May Yahweh's blessings be with you. Thank you, Brother Kilgore. Good to be with you and the board, district board. <clears throat> Brother Chambers, Brother Beckton. A lot of precious memories flood my soul as I look at all these men that's been mightily used of God. And my district superintendent, Brother Tenney, such a blessing to have him here tonight. I appreciate him so much. There was a time when I was preaching gifts of the Spirit that I had to almost stand alone. But Brother Tenney stood with me. So did Brother Kilgore, Brother O.W. Williams, and a few more. And I appreciate that song. I'd rather have Jesus. Anything. The old song, when you said Jesus, you said it all. You said it all. Someone a while ago said, Something about the Lord looking on the heart, not on the outside. I wonder why he put clothes on Adam and Eve. He wouldn't look into the outside every once in a while. In fact, that's the first thing he did. Amen. But right now, upon the authority of God's Word, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I take authority and dominion over every spirit, both demonic and human, that would oppose the Holy Spirit, I bind you in Jesus' name. Would you be seated? Now, I'd like for, you know, the Bible said when Jesus ascended on high, he gave gifts unto men, and they became preachers. That's what he was talking about there in Ephesians 4, preachers. I'd like for every minister that's called of God to preach the gospel to stand, would you? All over the place. Give them a hand, congregation. Now, remain standing. I'm doing this because I need these men tonight. And while the district board and the brethren was praying for me in the back, I entered into uh, the <clears throat> dimension of visions. And I'm just there, right there, and <clears throat> trying to stay here. But whatever the Lord says tonight, I'm going to say it. Yes, I'll soon be 86. And I'm not running for an office. And I'm not looking to preach anywhere. So I'm going to do it like I feel. Amen. I was voted uh, man of the year last year in my city. And it was a per backslider. 
said to one of the, my members, said, I wonder what doctrine he compromised to get that. I want to tell you, I didn't compromise nothing. I didn't know I was going to get it till I got there. Don't have to compromise to have friends. You don't have to compromise to have crowds. I want you to look at these preachers. Every preacher that's called of God, there's three things that goes with it. There's more, but there's three that definitely, things that definitely go with every man that's called to preach. You'll read it to 70. I know there'll never be any more like the 12 apostles. Their names will be in the foundation of the city. There's going to be a lot of people, if they could get there, they'd have a debate over why they got it. But they won't get there. But the 70 is representing the church until your day and mine. And the Lord sent these men to preach the gospel to cast out devils and to heal the sick. Every one of them. There's not a God-called preacher that don't have the power to preach and pray revival down. There's not a God-called preacher that don't have the power to cast out devils. If you don't have, turn your card in. You have it. You have the authority to lay hands on the sick. Every preacher, not just some fellow out on the big wheel, but every God-called preacher has power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. I need the faith of you ministers tonight. Nobody's going to get the credit for anything that happens here tonight but Jesus. Not long ago, somebody called me to pray for them. They called me two or three days later telling me what a great miracle. I forgot to pray for them. But God honored their faith. They got it anyhow. Praise God. These men that are standing are the most powerful men that walk the face of the earth because they have been called into the church that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. And preacher, if there's something happening around you that you don't like, just stop it. Get rid of the devil. You can be seated. Now tonight, the Lord talked to me coming over and tonight here. The church is coming against some big spiritual battles. They're big ones, but can't be compared with the force that we've got behind us. The Lord said, the early church subdued nations. It's time this church rose up and began to subdue nations and pray revival down and bind the devil. You see, it's like this. The Lord was showing me we need to go to work behind the scenes before it happens. These principalities are organizing. And right now, they may be, you may have the most beautiful, lovely, sweet family, but hell may be found a feller that can look like an angel, talk like one, so get him to marry your little daughter and wreck the whole family just about it. Tie it up. 
The Lord said, if you'll pray, I learned this the hard way. If you'll learn to pray, pray before it happens and bind the devil that's trying to invade your home, your church, get behind the scenes and bind these powers. We have the power to bind devils. We have the power to stop them. That little darling don't have a chance. He's saying everything in the world she wants to hear and never dreamed of hearing. But you see, when you stop the devil that's motivating him, then you stop the devil that's talking to her, making her dream about him, wake up thinking about him, go to bed thinking about him. God can stop it. He may have some angel that has horns about to sprout headed for your church tonight to get inside and try to wreck it. He's making some big plans against not only the local church, but the whole church worldwide. He's organized and he's getting ready, but we are ready. Oh, this is not my sermon either. But I want to tell you something. If God said something, don't try to reason with it. When he put the tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden, he put it right spat in the middle. We'd all voted against that. What for? To try Adam and Eve. He could have chose a hickernut tree. Any other thing he wanted to, just put anything he took a notion in there. He could have said, don't touch that turtle over there. And of course, they'd have touched him. You see, the thing that this generation don't understand, God is testing you to see if you're fit to come to his eternal kingdom. It don't matter what the world thinks. I told the church the other day, we're so close to the coming of the Lord. If I had any doubt that a toothpick might keep me out of heaven, I'd never put another in my mouth. That's right. We're close to the coming of the Lord. This is no time to let down. If the Lord had said in that book, every man must let his hair grow down long and all women cut it, we'd still had the same problem, of course. But mine would have been long tonight. You can mark it down in your little book, friend, because he's tested me. It's none of my business. What he uses to test me, I just need to do it. Before I announce my text, why some fail to receive healing from the Lord? Number one, ignorance concerning what God's Word teaches about healing. Brother Bernard's got a good gift, a book on gifts of the Spirit. And then, is it God's will? You must settle it tonight that it is God's will to heal you. He wants you well tonight. If I went to the doctor today at 12 o'clock and he just said, Reverend, you've got cancer and six months to live. But if... The Lord had planned to take me tomorrow instead of six months from now. I believe it to heal me of cancer and let me die tomorrow and go to heaven well. He just don't want us sick. How to plant God's seed. You know, a woman the other day said, Brother Barnes, why don't God do something? 
I said, what are you talking about? She said this and that and so forth. I said, look, if you, if you had a garden and you was going to plant some seed, I said, I'll tell you what. God put his miracle in that seed. He ain't going to break up the ground. He's not going to plant it. And he's not going to cultivate it. He's not going to harvest it whenever uh, it comes harvest time. But he will do three things. The miracle is in the seed. He'll send the sunshine and the rain. And the rest of it's up to you or no harvest. The word of God is the seed. And if I can get you to let God plant it tonight, you're going to have a miracle here. Amen. How many has ever had a miracle healing in your lifetime? Wave your hands at me. All right. My question is, do you really want to get well? You'd be surprised at the people that don't want to get well. They use sickness to punish yourself for some sin that they ought to confess to God a long time ago. If you're doing that, if you'll stop being a little God and go to the great big God that can forgive you of that sin, you won't need the crutch any longer. Another question. Are you on a pension? Do you really want to get well? Are you sitting there asking the question, what if God heals me? I'll have to go to work. I'll have to take up my bed and walk. Amen. He ain't going to heal you till you trust him and say, I'll take up my bed and walk. I'll go to work. I'm getting down where we live, you know. Praise God, praise God. All right. Now I'll read my text. And I have chosen this subject because it's the best one that I've ever found in the entire book, the Bible, to bring healing to your body. I've been preaching 63 years. And 74 years ago, a one God, Jesus named Pentecostal preacher came to our town. And that's where we all got in. I was baptized right. Amen. I'm sorry the United Pentecostal Church didn't teach me what I'm preaching tonight because I was in it before you ever came along. I just helped organize a little bit here and there because we should have organization. Amen. We found that out the hard way that we needed good organization. But I'm reading my scripture tonight. You want to stand this one more time? Matthew 8:17. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. If he bore our sickness, why should we? I ask you why. If he bore it for you, why? Settle it now. I'm not after this night. I'll not bear it any longer. I'm getting rid of it tonight. Everybody say, I'm getting rid of it tonight. In Jesus' name, I'm getting rid of it tonight. Do it now, Lord, now, now. First Peter 2, 24. By whose stripes ye were healed. The United Pentecostal manual 
has these words in it. Healing for the body is in the atonement. And that will be my text tonight, is healing in the atonement. And if not, where in the world is it? It is in the atonement. And I'm going to bring that to you tonight. And when I bring that to you tonight, it's going to bring you your miracle. You're gonna, it's going to touch your body tonight. I have a witness before I got here. And while sitting on the platform, the healer is in this place tonight. The great physician is here. And there is nothing too hard for him. He can do anything, anything you believe for. It's all up to you. All right, you can be healing. Be, be seated or healed, either one. Praise the Lord. Dr. R.A. Troy said this about the atonement. The very famous Baptist preachers in years gone by. He said the atoning death of Jesus Christ secured for us not only physical healing, but the resurrection and perfection and glorifying of our bodies. The gospel of Christ has salvation for the body as well as for the soul. If healing is not in the atonement, how are you going to get out of the graveyard? But it is in the atonement because God created us in his own image. He loves these bodies enough to stop in Pilate's Hall and be almost beaten to death. He loves these bodies that you're sitting in tonight, and he was whipped that you might be made whole tonight. I know we're getting away from that. A lot of people are. But per perfect faith in the atonement brings the greatest results. Someone is always calling me, asking the question, why doesn't God answer my prayer? I said, have you really prayed through? So often our prayers are only skin deep. If you want healing, read your Bible. Pray the Bible. Pray it into your innermost being. Believe it into your innermost being. Confess it into your innermost being. Get it on the inside and stop this shallow stuff. Calvary is the greatest foundation for the greatest faith ever released by men or angels. Here at Calvary, do you know why so many people go over the deep end? And they start out good. But they take this Bible, and this is where you get your faith. Faith come by hearing, and hearing the Word, and believing the Word. And they, they stay in the book, and they read it, and they fast, and they pray. And there's something about faith like energy that comes up out of the Word into you. The healing virtue was referred to once by one uh, translator, uh, miraculous energy. This great energy from God, strength and power, comes up out of the Word into our innermost being. And then these fellows will drift off on cloud nine and disconnect from this as a guide. They're out there floating around, waiting for a voice to speak and say, Behold the art, the greatest man that's ever walked the earth. And behold, I send you forth, and you'll do all these things. And here the poor feller is wandering around now. 
He had the faith once delivered, but disconnected with where he got it. And now he's out there just wandering to and fro, not knowing which way to go. My friend, if you're going to rise to cloud nine, take this with you. The bird never flies so high that it don't have to come back down to earth again. I don't care how high you may go, you're going to have to come back and look at this again and again and again. This is his plan. And crowds don't change it. Doctors and lawyers and professors has nothing to do with it. Amen, amen. It's still the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Now, is healing in the atonement. Where did it all begin? Where did this subject of salvation and healing first begin? Revelation 13 and 8. The Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. First Peter 1 and 20. It was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Now, a lot of these fellas says the world's four billion years old. I don't think they know nothing but however old it is and however long it was back there. The works are finished from the foundation of the world. It, the church was finished in the mind of God from the foundation of the world. Amen. He knows what he's doing and where he's going. He knows it's 1999 and June the 30th from the foundation of the world, he knew there would be a camp meeting in Tioga and in Lufkin, Texas. He knew these camps would be this year. And he said, I'm going to walk among them. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 4. He has chosen us before the foundation of the world. So salvation and healing is not a new doctrine. Satan brought two evils into the world, sin and sickness. And that's why Jesus came for this purpose. The Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Sin is the works of the devil. Sickness is the works of the devil. That don't mean that you sin necessarily, but Adam did. Amen. It's in the world. It's raging everywhere. But I still believe there's going to be a great healing revival such as we've never seen just before the rapture, which is now, even at the door. I read where a plague was stopped that killed 14,700 Israelites. Moses knew how to stop it. Moses said to Aaron, take a censer, put on incense, make an atonement for the people. And when the atonement was made, the plague stopped. Amen. Amen. Why look at the brazen serpent? Because Christ said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Praise the Lord. I want to take you back to Genesis. They put the blood on the doorpost. You know the story. And after they put the blood on the doorpost, which would keep the death angel from killing or destroying one of the children, they also ate the body of the lamb. Listen to me close. Here it is. The blood type of salvation. The death angel could not enter, but they were commanded to eat the lamb. And there were some two or three million Israelites. How many do you think were sick? Cripple, old age, unable to walk through that hot desert, 
hundreds of thousands, no doubt. Many on stretchers. And if they'd have had wheelchairs, there'd have been many, many of them. But the Bible tells us that after they ate of the lamb, there was not one, not one sick, lame among the multitudes. That was a great sweeping healing revival that night because they all rose up. The 90-year-olds with strength to walk. The blind with eyes to see. Amen. The lame with legs to walk. All rose up and marched out of Egypt. Let me tell you tonight, church, we're on the way out of this world. But think of this. Why aren't we, why aren't we getting the benefit of this great miracle of healing? And we asked uh, the Apostle Paul here to tell us why this is happening. Now listen to him, 1 Corinthians 11 and 30. For this cause... Many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep, for they are dead. Why, Paul? He said, because they not, have not discerned the Lord's body. They have not discerned that when they take the bread and eat it, as it happened to the Israelites when they ate the lamb, healing should flow through our body. When we have sacrament, and when we eat that bread, every person in the whole building ought to be healed. Amen. Why do I say that? Because tonight we live in the better covenant. Hebrews 8 and 6. But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Look at it. A more excellent ministry. A better covenant on better promises. Hebrews 12, 24, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Hebrews 13 and 20, the blood of the everlasting covenant. One supreme sacrifice. Never will there be another one. Praise God. You sitting here looking at me tonight, you're living in a better covenant, better under a better covenant than the Old Testament did. They had great things happen, but we should be healed every day. And what does healing of the body do or should do to us? Remind us this body is coming out of the graveyard. God loves my body. He's healing me now. He's proven it now, Lord. I'm preaching to these people. I'm asking you to prove it now. You said prove me. Now I'm telling them what you said. And miracles are going to happen here. And I've sent the message to them tonight. And right now... In just a few minutes, we're going to give the spoken word to you that are lost and you that are sick. And let me explain it to you now. Let's get down to just simple, everyday things. The Lord reminded me of this the other day when I was praying. He said, if my people had as much faith in me as you folks have in fly spray and wash spray, he said, remember when you went out the other day, there was that big old wasp nest where you can't have spray? You knew you had faith in that spray. You knew them fellas would get you. And then when I let go a puff of it, there was a rare of just ready to get me. He took all the fight out of them. Just one puff. 
They changed their mind about getting me. And another puff had brother, they hit the ground and pled. I want to tell you something tonight. Why can't you see this happening when the name of Jesus is shouted over you? Why can't you see? I knew before I went there those walls were going to run. I knew before I went there they was going to die. And I know tonight the devil's on the run. And I know tonight that God's going to heal the sick. Now the spoken word. Let me explain that to you a little further now. The spoken word, how does it work? F faith that speaks the word. When faith speaks the word, that's what's called the spoken word. And now as I speak tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my words are going to enter your eardrums. That means the living word is already inside of you. It's in your flesh already. It's in your eardrums already. And if it's that far, only your unbelief can keep it from going straight to your problem. Praise God. Praise God. But his word was in my heart. Jeremiah said, as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And again he said, I put my word in thy mouth. And Hebrews 4 and 12, God can put his word in the soul, in the spirit, and in the joints, and in the marrow, and in the thoughts, and the intents of the heart. That's what I'm talking about. If you will let the word go past your eardrums tonight, your miracle is ready. Amen. You got to hear it, and then you got to believe it. Everybody say, I hear it, and I'm now believing it. I'm going to let it go to my problem, to my disease, whatever it is. It's going. One night, I was preaching, and they brought, a minister brought his wife in a wheelchair. Been crippled with a stroke for years. And I preached on faith in action that night. And she was sitting right down the front. And I had that crowd on pins and needles ready. But that poor thing, she decided to put hers in action. And she leaped, tried to, and fell like a sack of potatoes in the floor. The devil said, the healing service is over. I said, you're a lying devil. It's just getting started. You don't go by what you see. You don't go by what you feel. You go by the Word. I said, devil, you're lying. I said, woman, you're going to walk this night. I grabbed her, and sure enough, she began to walk. I turned her loose. She walked by herself. She walked to the car. She walked home, and she told me a month or two later when I met her, she said, I went home, and I was afraid to go to bed. I might wake up crippled, so I just walked all night. <laughs> Glory, the spoken word, the living word, that spirit, and its life. Amen. Are you ready? Would you say it, Jesus? Say it again, Jesus. 
Say it from the heart, Jesus. Say it like you love it. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Amen. They love that name. They died for that name. They went to jail for that name. Amen, amen, amen. You must love it. You must love it. It won't work. It won't open up to you unless you love it. I'm sending it to you. If you love it, if you love it, when you say Jesus, it's full of miraculous things. Amen. Everything you need is in it. Amen. You've got to believe it'll work. You've got to see it at work in your own body. Amen. Where is that place that's hurting right now? Amen. Amen. Is there a place somebody hurting right now? Just a pain somewhere in your body stand. Amen. Amen. Upon the authority of God's word, I send the spoken word in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the pain to go from your body now. All right, the words entering your eardrums. The word is going now, now, now to the pain, and it's gone. Wave your hand if it's gone. The healers in the house, all over the place. The hurting pain, look at them. A thousand people, perhaps. It left, why? Because you let the word enter your eardrums. You let the word go to your problem. Amen. And the word knows how to take care of your problem. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I believe in that name. I see the name at work. There's other spirits here tonight. Somebody asked me the question, said... This sin is so big. I said, what do you mean big? You can be seated. I said, you can go to hell for unbelief. You can go to hell for lying. I said, but this homosexual spirit, and I'm talking to somebody tonight. Amen. If I didn't believe God could deliver you, I throw that Bible down never, never in my life. Preach again. I know that my God can, if you repent. If you want to stand, and you know, I'm not saying you that, but if you want to stand for somebody that you know, and then you're going to carry this message back to them, and you're going to talk to them. You just know some, somewhere or another. You can stand, and I'm going to talk to you now. All power that anybody needs is in the name. If they confess their sin, he's faithful and just. It had been done in Solomon and Gomorrah. They would remain until this day. That meant had they seen and felt the ministry of Jesus Christ, they'd have repented, and he would have forgiven them. Yes, he forgives all sin. Nothing that he didn't die on the cross for. Now, Father, I pray that these folks will be charged and anointed if these people would only get delivered and not be afraid to tell the world 
write books about it and tell the world like dope addicts whenever they get delivered. We'd see, a tra see this thing changed. We'd see a move on. Now, you see, God's not going to bring judgment on the nation because of one pervert. But when a bunch of them get together and organize and trying to push it down somebody else's throat, God comes on the scene. Amen. And he's about to come on the scene. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But that's just one. There's a whole kind of them out there. But now, you can be seated. How many has been healed of something already besides that pain it left while you've been listening to me tonight? Stand up out there. I just want to know how many of the Word got to you. And just the Lord just healed you while you was, you was out there just, just moving around. Amen. Oh, they keep standing all over the place. Praise the Lord. Oh, the power in the atonement. Praise God. I'm so glad I'm living in the better blood covenant. The blood covenant of Jesus Christ gives me power and authority and dominion that the devil never knew could ever be given to a human being. But the devil is troubled. He's worried. He's really worried, and I, I'm glad he is. I remind him of it often. I said, your time is short. I understand why you're mad. I understand why you're restless. I understand why you're getting all your principalities organized, but we can cut them off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't forget that. There is no... There's nothing too hard for the Lord. You say, well, I can handle this little devil. The big one is just as easy to handle as the little devil. If you know how. And you know how you come at the devil in Jesus' name. And because you love it, you believe it, you know it's working. Amen. Everybody's got arthritis. Stand to your feet upon the authority of God's word. We're going to set you free in Jesus' name. I have watched bones that have been twisted for years, instantly made like wax, and straighten out. Let me tell you all this one. This lady was in my church. The baby was born. She didn't show up for church, and I called. Now, what's wrong? I hadn't been seen you in church. She said, my baby is born deformed. Its little face is sunk in. Its little legs are turned all the way up. Just terrible. And she said, I can't stand for anybody to look at my little afflicted baby. I said, do you bring it to church if you want to come late is Easter? I said, this is a good time. I said, you come on up, covered up with a blanket, and I'll just stick my hand under the blanket and pray for it. You can go on back. But when I did, I felt Holy Ghost power. She went back to the seat. And she peeped under the cover, and that little face is perfect. She reached down, and one of the little legs was still up a little, and she just pushed it, she said, and just went straight. I command those hardened bones that's been there way so long to soften and straighten in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say it, I hear it. I hear the name. I receive the name. It's taking care of my problem. It's taking care of my problem. 
All right, stomp your feet, clap your hands. It's happening. Is it happening? Wave your hands at me. Is it happening? In the name of the Lord, receive it. And may it be a permanent fixture in Jesus' name. It never has been God's will, never has been God's will for you to be crippled up with that stuff. Now, believe that. Amen. You know, you run into a lot of things in the healing service. So many people, a lot of people healed here during the latest conference all over the place. Amen. This fellow walked in, he had a crippled arm. He had his friend, it was deep in politics. I guess that's the reason he is sick, I don't know. But anyway, when it's all over, the fellow said, look, and he wrote a check. I said, I don't take money for praying for the sick. He said, well, I'll give it to the church then, $5,000. The other fellow, it's a mayor of a large city now. He was in politics then. The Lord touched him so mightily, he, he got his checkbook. He wrote one for $1,000 to the church. I wouldn't take it, of course. Another fellow, he... He gave $3,000 has got him and his wife straightened out. You know, if I took all that money, I'd be rich, but I'm poor as old Job's turkey, but I'm going to be rich when I get to heaven. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another business couple at Castle gave me $10,000. Couldn't take it. Give it to the church. All right. I'm not in this for money. I'm be 86 years old, 12th of July. And uh, I'm not looking for nothing but to heaven's open one day and go to heaven. Amen. But now I'm waiting. I'm seeing things, feeling things right now. Amen. Growths and tumors and warts and all them kind of things gets on your body. Now, you see, they, they just vanish. One of our ministers called me and he said, would you pray for my daughter? She's got a growth on her back, right on her spinal cord, big as a Coke can. While we prayed, it vanished just like that. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Just to show you how anxious the Lord is to heal. I was driving down the road and I kept seeing somebody flagging me, flagging me. And so the preacher got out. He said, preacher, he said, uh, my mother back down the car, she's getting out. She's got a gorer. Said she said, if you can stop that preacher, God's going to heal me. Well, he got me stopped. And here she came, the biggest than I ever seen. It's bigger than grapefruit. Oh, it's water. And I walked toward her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I never felt it. It wasn't there when my hand went on her neck. It's gone. You see, Jesus wants to heal. You say, where did it go? I don't know. There's a lot of things I don't know about God, I'll tell you that. But he knows what he's doing, where he's going. And he knows I'm his little boy. I read that scripture, I said, you said you wouldn't forget me in my old days. There it is in the Bible. I said, uh, I'm going to hold on to that tonight. Because the one thing I want to show him that you're the healer, you're the savior. Amen. And if I was a backslider, you think I'd stay? I I'd stay all night, I'd get saved. The rapture, it's here. I've been hearing the coming of the Lord preach since 1925. 
that somewhere between now and the year 2000, he's coming. Well, I, I'm not saying now. I don't know, but he's coming. He had not the ladies coming. He'll be here on time. He don't go by our calendars. He's got his own book. He's got his own roster roll. Some people think they're saved because they got the name on the roster roll. Honey, I want to ask you, is it on his? Amen. Fellow said to me, I know I'm saved. He said, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I said, but how do you know he accepted you? All right. Praise the Lord. I feel the anointing. I feel the moving of the Holy Ghost. If you have any of these things wrong, will you stand in Jesus' name? If you believe, when you hear the word, it's going into your flesh right to that thing and cause it to go. Come on, stand all over the place. Stand. Amen. Ministers, thank God for these ministers. Amen. Hallelujah. Preacher, call me now. I get calls all the time, folks. Don't know what to do with when hell breaks loose in the church. I said, you're the pastor. Take care of it. My God. Beat the devil. Daylights out of the devil. Run him off. The Bible said, resist the devil and he'll flee. Get rid of him. Old sister Jones, he get rid of all the devils that's following her around. Well, she won't be inspired anymore to do anything. She's whipped. She don't know where, where she's getting all that from. But it's gone now. And the Holy Ghost is talking. Praise God. Everybody said, praise the Lord. Praise Everybody the Lord. said, Jesus, Jesus, reach forth your hand and heal. heal. For we command every tumor, every growth, disappear in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, go now. It's in the atonement. He settled it for you. He did it for you. He bore it for you. Throw it away. He took care of it for you. It's done. Don't just wait a minute. Some of you knows it's gone. Wave your hand. If it's gone, come on. Here's some. All right, over this way. Here's some. All right, all back in here. Wave your hand at me. All right, all back yonder. All right, down this aisle here. Come on. Wave your hand at me. All right, down this way. Wave your hand. Amen. Hey, man. All right, all over here. Look at them all over yonder, way up to the wall. Now that ought to let you know if you had one inwardly, it's gone too. Lift your hands and thank the Lord now. Let's stand and worship the Lord a minute. Amen. Praise God. How many will come to this altar? I want to be saved tonight. I want to get back to God. I want the Holy Ghost. We're going to pray a mass prayer so, for some more sickness in just a minute. But would you sing, somebody? We got backsliders. Amen, amen. Amen. I pray for those in the wheelchair in Jesus' name. Let it enter you now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
All right, here they come. I'm asking every backslider, would you please obey God tonight? Would you please obey the Holy Ghost that's talking to you tonight, sinner? Come on. Come on down. And as they come, we're going to get ready. The Lord's going to reach out and heal everybody. Keep coming. That's all right. Come with them, some of you saints. Bring them on. Thank you, Lord. Receive the Holy Ghost. If you've repented, he said, confess your sins, ask forgiveness, and then receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's so easy once you really repent. Amen. They're coming. Keep coming. Did you know the Spirit is moving tonight? towards sinners and backsliders. Oh, God, how he's moving here tonight. All over this place. Amen. Some of you saints that know some of these can come on now. Now, we haven't covered some of the things that's wrong with you tonight, but whatever it is, put your hand up. I'm going to pray for you all over the place. I didn't mention your disease. Everybody, ministers, would you say it with me in saints? Oh, Lord Jesus, you see every hand. Stretch forth your hand. In Jesus' name, we command the disease to go. Go tonight forever. In Jesus' name. No one can touch you like
please like, comment, and subscribe.